Hello everyone, this is First March and I'm Ladis Wim Brad, your host. We're meeting after quite a long time, two months time. Today what I'm going to do is uh, I'm here because we had budget yesterday, budget uh, second budget of Narendra Modi's government. So what I will do today is I'm not going to discuss the specific of the budget, you know, that you can read on different website also like which things are going to become costly and which things are going to become you know uh, cheaper what I want to do is I want to uh, you know kind of discuss the underlying ideas that is driving this budget the, the theoretical issues you know the ideology that is kind of driving this budget you know first of all what I want to say very quickly is that if you want to understand any action of any governments, not just the BJP government or Congress government or Ahmadi Party's government, you have to understand that all these political parties have only one goal and all these politicians have only one goal in their mind. And then one goal is, goal is to get elected first and then continuously get re-elected. Because as I have said in my past video analysis also that these guys are career politicians so for them it is a lifetime kind of business it's, it's their profession right it's their occupation so that's why what they want to do is want to get elected and then want to get re-elected so everything that they are doing is in line of this goal only they are whatever they are doing is to achieve this goal of getting elected and re-elected so you have to see the whole budget and all of the government action in, in the light of this fact Right. So, uh, what happened? You know, after getting into power, uh, Modi government was doing. Since that time, he's just doing rhetoric on the talk, talk, talk. And Modi is a very good rhetorician, and people can be, you know, uh, get sucked up into his rhetorics and everything. And I, I think that's what many of the people are now realizing that it is just talk and nothing concrete. Uh, businessmen are also telling that. Uh, nothing concrete is changing on the ground, it's just talk and everything. But what I'm saying is that uh, after that, uh, they came to power and all this, uh, instead of focusing on the economy, like what they promised in the pre-election time, it's in the run-up of the, to the election of Lok Sabha 2014, uh, they were focusing on other issues like Hindutva and Garvapsi and uh, attacks on the church in New Delhi, vandalizing the and you know, kind of threatening the minorities. And because of that they they very heavily lost the Delhi election. There was a big dropping of BJP party and Modi's government in Delhi. They lost everything. They just you know were able to win three votes. So the whole budget is <clears throat> kind of a reaction also to that Delhi dropping. So they're just trying to balance, you know, things like that. They, they are not they don't want to show that they're kind of anti poor people so they, they want to kind of continue all the policies of the UPA government. Very shockingly Narendra Modi said in the parliament that he wants to continue the Manorega program just just as a failure, just as an evidence, kind of a you know, fossil evidence of the failures of the UPA government. That itself is a very kind of you know shocking statement coming from the prime minister what is the thing that you know he just wants to waste all the taxpayers resources just to you know kind of keep on reminding people that this is the kind of a failure of the congress government instead of just shutting it down and saving precious resources of the taxpayers it's like a child's play for these politicians but anyway what i'm saying is that it's all about you know trying to balance that thing and, and yes what I want to say is that the online ideology is the same Keynesianism fiscal policy ideology you see right now the Indian economy is in the hole right it's into trouble this in recession the growth rate has come down from nine ten percent to five percent and uh, the team the advisor of economic advisor team that is surrounding Narendra Modi right now are all this you know, basically, people call them right-winger, free market economic. They are not free market. They are all Keynesians, like Manmohan Singh, for example. So what they're telling him that they, you know, instead of worrying about the fiscal, you know, widening fiscal deficit, what Modi government should do is that they just should go and, and spend on big infrastructure projects, on um, so-called defense projects. And if, if the governments, you know, kind of, they think that because the private sector is not investing, so that the government needs to pick up the tab and start investing and filling that 
gap in the aggregate demand and they think that because the aggregate demand has fallen down that's why the economy is into recession and if they want to jumpstart the economy then government will have to spend so that's what the budget is all about you know they say that the go this budget is pro growth and pro investment but what we have to understand is this spending 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 is not going to help anyone because the problem is this spending itself, you know, the economy is into trouble because of this government's meddling into the economy. You see, when he was delivering his speech, he was saying that <clears throat> the main role of taxation is that it helps the government in social engineering. So the social engineering itself is a problem. You know, politicians think that <clears throat> we people are like some kind of uh, cogs in the whole machine of the economy and they can <clears throat> turn and fix us wherever they want to. That is not the case. Economy is not a machine and they are not social engineers. But that very same policy of meddling in the free market capitalist economy is the cause of all the economic troubles that we have today. So the spending is the cause. So question, the question is, you know, how the more spending is going to get us out of the trouble. What we actually require is less and less government. So instead of, you know, government boosting investment, remember one thing, government cannot invest anything because they don't have their own savings, they don't have their own income. What they do is that they take from the one party and they give it to the other. They take from the productive class of the people and they give it to the unproductive class of the society. So like basically they are doing wasteful spending and everything. They, they are just going to squander our resources. So government investment is not going to help the economy. It's, it's going to far, further destabilize the economy. It's, it's further going to kind of you know, result in more malinvestment and it's going to create more bubbles. And, and, and the whole economic structure and the capital structure is going to get distorted further. And what will happen because of this in future is that these bubbles will in the end burst in future and then we will have more pain in future. So, you know, JT said that he is not worrying about, you know, kind of containing the fiscal deficit right now. He just want to focus on investment. But that, that focus on so-called investment spending is what is going to create more trouble because uh, how they are going to kind of bridge this fiscal deficit, how they are going to fill the gap. You know, basically they will ask the RBI to lower the investment, print money, lower the interest rate and just, you know, monetize the deficit and that is nothing but inflation. So prices are just going to go up in future also because the uh, government is going to, you know, start its on a spending being right now. Uh, another thing very important, you know, since Modi has come to power, I'm saying is a very disturbing trend is that he's just solely focusing on war spending. He, he thinks that, you know, China or Pakistan is going to, he, he, maybe he doesn't think, he's, it's just a propaganda, right, uh, of these right-winger people. So they are, they are telling everybody that any time China can attack us or Pakistan attack us, can attack us, so that we have to get ready, we have to defend ourselves, and in the name of this, you know, national defense, these guys are kind of, you know, trying to divert all the society's resources into war spending, manufacturing war machinery. The question, very simple question over here is that in a country where, you know, more than 35 crore people are, you know, uh, poor, living on less than $2 a day, can that society afford to waste so much resources in manufacturing guns and bullets instead of bread and butter? We don't need any kind of national defense, right? You know, maybe in future I'll discuss that national defense is a, is a myth. It's not a public good. The thing is that right now what is happening in India is the whole uh, military industrial complex about which General Eisenhower warned the Americans in, you know, when he, you know, kind of was, he was retiring from his presidency. And, and right now, American, you know, uh, Americans are facing the same military industry complex, you know, continuous war, perpetual war they're facing. Why? Because the, the military industry is so entrenched in the economy. So many people's jobs depend on that. And the economy depends on that. That it is very difficult to dismantle once it is firmly in place. And that's what, that is the threatening trend that I'm seeing in India right now. You know, many private companies, you know, like Mahindra and Mahindra, Reliance, Goldrich, for example, these people who were, you know, kind of manufacturing consumer goods items previously, now they are very much, you know, they have jumped the, you know, on the bandwagon of this uh, war industry and they all have started, you know, 
getting into the manufacturing of war machineries, which is very dangerous. So more guns and bullets that these companies are going to produce, less bread and butter they will be able to produce. Because we have limited amount of resources, you can only use it to do something. So, so that is a problem. And ultimately, see, when you're going to manufacture war machineries, what are you going to use? Where you're going to use it? You're going to use it to war only. And we all know that war is not going to be good for anyone. War means total destruction. So Modi's war mongering is going to kind of really put India into trouble in the future. That's what I really feel. And not only that, you know, adding to itself to the injury, uh, immediately after finishing the budget, you know, when the budget speech was over, I think midnight, the uh, government oil companies announced, you know, kind of hike in the uh, petrol and diesel price. So they hike the petrol price by 3 rupees uh, and also diesel price by uh, 3 rupees and today I'm hearing that they have also increased the jet fuel price by 8% so they just they just waited for the budget to come before that they were kind of reducing it so that they can win you know some state elections and immediately after the budget they decided to hike the prices so this kind of showing thumb to the people you know that you know there you go you voted for us we're not going to give you anything to you. So, uh, and, and, and in the end, what happened is, I think, uh, yesterday after uh, after the election was over, uh, reporters asked Arun Jaitley something, and he, he said, he said this, I'm just going to read to you. <clears throat> he said that, uh, Arun Jaitley ne kaha, this is in Hindi, Arun Jaitley ne kaha, middle class apna khyal khud rakhe. We have to do the work in five years, we have to do the middle class. Jaitli has said that we have to ask that we are in the middle of the world or in the middle of the world. So we are in the middle of the world. He said that we will have to do the work from the world, then we will have to do the social welfare schemes for the world. Now, this is very... Funny, he's, he's saying that middle class will have to take care of itself. So this is this middle class is the one who voted for you know Narendra Modi's government, and now they're getting nothing. Uh, I'm reading the viewers, you know, kind of readers' command, and they're also kind of very revealing. One thing we really realize that you know we clearly realize when we read this command is that uh, election is nothing but every class of the society, every individual is trying to you know lessen his burden. The government parasite that is sucking his blood. Everybody is trying to kind of lessen their burden. Uh, so everybody is looking at the government and thinking that they are going to kind of, you know, let them go on their own way. You know, don't put all kind of onerous taxes on them. But re you know, Jaitley did something exactly opposite. He increased service taxes and everything. And so middle class will have to pay more now. And I think everybody will have to pay more. Basically, he gave some perks to the corporate sector. So that is basically fascism, you know, I'm telling that Modi government is a fascist government. Businesses, you know, big businessmen, corporates like Adani's and Ambani's and Tata's and Dila's are in bed with the government and they are together kind of looting the public. So that is, this budget is the example of that thing, you know, and they are saying that uh, he's going to earn something from the rich people and going to give it to the poor people. Well, and, and, he, and he's saying that, well, this is the thing which we are hearing since many years, like 60, 70 years of Indian independence. Uh, still poor people are with us, still poverty with us. Every government will come and say that they want to remove poverty. So poverty is a big business for these people. In the name of removing poverty, these politicians and bureaucrats are removing their own poverty only. So they are not going to remove anybody's poverty but their own poverty, as I say. And, and, and this is very revealing, you know, they are saying that middle class will have to take care of themselves. So if that is the case, if we are going to take care of ourselves, then why do we need the government? Right? And we don't need, I'm not saying that we, we need them to kind of, you know, give us all the freebies. I'm saying that, you know, if you think that we can take care of ourselves, then we don't need you, right? And, and, and not only that, if you think that we should take care of ourselves, then stop, you know, robbing us every day, stop you know, kind of remove the taxation from the, you know, middle class people, for example. If you think that you're going to earn money from the rich people and are super duper wealthy, uber rich people, and, and then you want to use that money, you know, in so-called uh, poverty removal social welfare programs, then just take the middle class out of the picture and you know, stop, you know, taxing them and tax the rich people and then give that money to the poor people. Obviously, that's not going to work because taxation itself is robbery. Whether you're taxing middle class or poor people or the rich people, it's not going to work. 
But what is basically happening is these guys have become so arrogant, Modi and his government has become so arrogant that they are making this kind of arrogant statements on the face of people and, and many people are facing really, really, you know, there are people are really angry. That's what I'm saying from the from the commands. And I think in the coming election time, BJP government is going to, you know, you know get more dropping, I guess. But basically, as I said very quickly, you know, I just want to recap, is uh, this budget is kind of nothing, nothing new. It's all same, you know, kind of uh, old, uh, you know, wine of Keynesianism in the new bottle of, you know, finance minister Arun Jaitley. The people who are advising people like Jagdish Bhagwati and Arun Panagari and Subramaniam, they're all Keynesians. So they are thinking that by increasing government spending, they can bring the economy out of recession. And they are they are hundred percent wrong in their in their ideas. These are wrong ideas. Government spending is the problem. If you want the economy to get out, then government will have to stop interfering. They will have to stop spending. The size of government must shrink instead of getting bigger and bigger every day. And only then, and they should allow the free market to kind of you know cleanse the economy of all this malinvestment, and only then economic and continue on its natural path. As long as government is meddling in the you know free market economy, I, I don't think so, you know, we are going to see good days. There are no achieving for anybody. Okay, they promise achieving, but there are no achieving for anybody. Alright, so uh, you just keep on waiting for your achieve din. I don't think so. They are going to come as long as these these guys, these thugs, these criminals are in power. Uh, as long as we don't have freedom and liberty, Achyadin are not going to be here. So I'll see you later on and just thank you for watching me and goodbye.